R.I.P. Yes, Jules. Not in that way, just in the work way. Fucking hell, man. Kanye decided to do the unthinkable, the unbloody thinkable, and he fired Yes, Jules randomly today. Um, so this was his post courtesy of the Good House Sub um, Twitter account there. Um, he posted this on his Instagram story, then quickly deleted it. The caption says, we have decided to no longer have Yes Jules involved in the rollout for Vultures. All activities on her page and with our fans in the past few days has been unauthorized. So Ye making it very, very clear in no way, shape or form is anything Yes Jules doing associated with him, Yeezy, Vultures, nothing. Get the fuck out of here. It's really sad to be fair how it kind of played out. As much as as much as a grifter and a chancer and a little bit conniving and slimy as she is, I kind of like her. I'm not gonna lie. Because there's a lot about her personality that I would like that I wish I had. That ability to be a little bit unapologetically like ambitious and you know, um, what you call it, wanting to climb the ladder and wanting to step over anybody to get there and being about your business, all these type of things, right, are really important in terms of kind of making your way in the scene, especially if you think you don't have a role as a creative, no, you don't have a role as like the main core character in front of the camera, be that behind the scenes person and fighting tooth and nail to get that spot. I appreciate her and her personality, how she goes about it. But there was a part of me that I was thinking, I think this girl is doing too much. And I think it all kind of stemmed from, if anything, that um, when they did that listening party, I think it was in Miami somewhere, and it didn't have an ox cable, and things were going all over the place, and it was too crowded, and people were fucking getting squashed in the crowd. It looked like a nightmare. I think that was probably the first time that I kind of noticed a bit of like, oh, this girl probably isn't as good as she says she is, or as good as she purports when it comes to these activations, when it comes to just being a person that can fucking put on events and make sure they go off without a hitch. She just never really kind of seemed like that girl. And then, of course, in recent months, um, she started to engage a lot with the Kanye community or the gay community, right? And it, to me, it always kind of left a bad taste in my mouth because it always felt like something that gay would never personally do or advocate for himself. He obviously does interact with the odd fan here and there who tags him or in his DMs. That's great to see. But by and large, he really does avoid talking to most of his fans or get involved with them in any kind of business way because, you know, He's got his own things to sort out. And if it's meant to be, I'm assuming he's probably that kind of person where it's like, oh, if it's meant to be, if I'm meant to find out about this certain person, I'll find out about them eventually. So he doesn't try and force it. But I think, yes, George was trying to force it too much. And the other day, um, I'm talking to you on Wednesday, but on Tuesday was the best example of it. She started a random space where she was basically trying to launch this Yeezy Army thing where she would kind of utilize all the skill sets and the knowledge and the experience and whatnot of Kanye's community and extended community and sort of use that to basically pitch different ideas to Kanye and Team Yeezy, whether it was a book, whether it was a panel discussion, um, whether it was like a coin thing, whether it was like a website to buy the music that Kanye doesn't want to stream on platforms anymore. There was all these ideas that were getting thrown out, right? And she was kind of leading that group chat. Um, it happened on Twitter Spaces earlier today. It went on for a few hours. And to be fair, it was quite inspiring to see all the fans of Gay be really creative and come up and kind of announce their talents and share some stuff they do. But when I was listening to it, I couldn't help but feel like this doesn't feel very yayish. There's not something gay would do. Would be out here kind of trying to harness the fans to go number one, do this, do that, this and if that. He would never do that sort of shit. If even if he did do it, he'll probably deny it, right? Or he wouldn't deny it. So I was really confused why a lot of people kind of got gassed and kind of got, you know, believing that that was actually going to be a true thing. When obviously it panned out and it wasn't. Courtesy of Good Our Sub again. And it's a screenshot allegedly taken by um milo yanapolos who is still working with yay i thought for a long time that he got fired but i guess yay does this a lot i guess yay loves to fire and hire people so milo is back now working with yay um at yeezy as chief of staff and look what he said to flipping look look at the email he sent to fucking yes jules the first one here it's got juliana goddard which is basically yes jules real name and then down here it says dear juliana obviously you're fired <laughs> can you imagine someone saying that to you obviously you're fired and then obviously um what's his name milo the petty cunt decided to take a screenshot of this and send it to all the yay fan pages i think not all of them i think he might send it to two and of course rest of them fucking leaked it online 
which is highly unprofessional. Like, if you know, if Yes Jules is being unprofessional by talking about yay easy business with fans or trying to get them involved, then it's also unprofessional. You'd imagine for Milo, the chief of staff, right? Which you would imagine might be a, a role that's probably within the HR realm, right? Um, it's look, it's people, it's a people role to do that and kind of you know post that online knowing what it could do to people and their confidence is really kind of scummy i'm not gonna lie so as much as i find it funny i did also find it kind of sad that he would do that and then the next email is the one that is really brutal so this is the next kind of email that was sent to um yes jules says the following confidential dear miss goddard i enclosed um pl sorry enclosed please find a letter statement of account from your time at yeezy Fines incurred to date as a result of your NDA violation come to $7.7 million. While you were a contractor, I suspended enforcement of this debt. It now falls due. Hassan from compliance team will reach out with information about payment. <laughs> um, please note that any further violations will incur um, would accrue sorry, more fines because you are being terminated for cause, but also because you forgot to sign your contract, your termination is effective immediately. Yours, Milo Yiannopoulos, Chief of Staff. Can you imagine how insane that is? That first email already is a lot and very kind of rude and really unnecessary, right? Obviously, you're, you're fired. And then the follow up to put all her business out there that she allegedly owes Team Yeezy $7.7 .7 million. First of all, I'd like to know, I'd like to know, how can you owe somebody $7.7 .7 million for breaking NFTs? Or oh, sorry, NFTs, for fucking uh, breaking an, an NDA? Does it mean that every time you violate the NDA, there's a fine attached to it? Well, what's the fine? Is the fine like 1.1 million? Is it 100,000? Is it 10 grand? Like, what is the actual, you know, fine for violating an NDA? Either way, I guess they, they take it very seriously there. They, she accrued all those costs and I guess maybe it was suspended while you work there and obviously when you stop you have to pay the whole thing in full which is pretty crazy but I don't know like what more can you say when you see this type of email to put a sort of business out there again maybe she shouldn't be too surprised yes Jules she has been a bit of a problematic controversial figure within hip-hop for a while um maybe a lot of this has to do with just her not having a lot of goodwill you know, she's not really well liked um, outside of people, maybe, you know, first thing for what she looks like as a human, like attractiveness level. I think as a professional, she doesn't really kind of, I think, um, I don't know if it's probably confidence, but I, I just don't get the feeling people like her. So I think the fan base anyway, especially the gay fan base, were definitely kind of like giving her the side eye when she was all up in, you know, all up in Ye's face, going to the fucking listening parties, events and shit. You know, it kind of seemed like they were actual friends, but now you think about it a bit more, it kind of feels like, you know, you she was one of those classic people who takes pride in like being with the coolest people but never actually does anything you know semi cool herself in that regard but yeah um george has now been kicked out of easy it's all fucking over the other sad thing as well is that last time i checked let me check now but the easy community is arguing they've been fucking arguing debating all day long let me just check and put the video volume up yeah, they're still arguing now. Myra and I were really close to Stephen Smith. Um, even Stephen that had a design has Myra blocked at the moment. So, Okay, the reason he has me blocked, I guess I can interject there, is the issue that we have is because, Emily, you constantly, and I brought this up to you privately, but I guess now we're entertaining an audience of 217 people with our story, which is whatever. But um, he, you have a habit, which I've spoken to you about, of gossiping about people nonstop and coming up with random stories and making them up, coming up with random narratives. You constantly talk shit about everybody that's in your circle to everybody. Like anything could happen and you're, you know it yourself. Like you've admitted it yourself. You're like the, whatever your parents call you, like the, the Emily news broadcast. And you just um, have a way of just making people look bad for no reason. Like, there's never anything that I did to Steven. Um, that's not why you got blocked. You got blocked because you were crying about money. So Steven Venmoed you money. And then the next day, all no, of a sudden... Steven gave me money because he wanted me to buy a jacket. So right. I bought a so, jacket. Anyways, you were crying about how you're a single mom and how you're poor and like da-da-da-da-da. So he, he felt bad, so he Venmoed you, okay? All of a sudden, a week goes by. Things are weird between you and I. There's some other things that happen in the middle that I can't share yet, but someday I can. Uh, Stephen and, and I sure would love to. 
Stephen and I were in LA hanging out at um, the American Apparel Warehouse, and Myra started getting really weird and jealous. Feeling no, that's Stephen not why. Let's back offense. up a little bit. Let's back up a little Stephen bit. Felt like, she felt like we weren't including her. Stephen told her, hey, it's been a really stressful day. We're including you as much as you want. I literally added Myra to multiple chats. I introduced her to everyone, but she had this feeling that I was excluding her from situations that she felt like she should be a part of. So all of a sudden, the next, like a week later, we see that Myra goes to the Yay concert in Vegas. And we're like, oh, that's weird. She was just complaining about money. And wouldn't she tell us if we're her best friends that she's going to the listening party in Vegas? Like, that's weird. And Myra stamps her podcast logo, a podcast that doesn't even exist, on the video, which is weird. And it fucking ruined the video, by the way, Myra. Terrible marketing. Um, I'm like, here you go talking shit all the time. Like, oh, you no, can't just tell a story without talking shit. Like, you well, don't have to insult along the way that you put about your, everything. You hate really about all it, the time. You, you can just up. talk how you need to talk, but you don't need to insult. And you don't need to state things that no, are I irrelevant. Like I, I, so, I don't know if you can see this, but basically on my Twitter spaces, there's a space here currently called Yay Community, which has 302 people listening. And they've been going back and forth, bickering and arguing and shit, all about the fallout from Yes Jules getting fired. So this is maybe her unfortunate lasting legacy in an effort to, you know, put together this hapdash kind of Yeezy army to support her favorite artists and to kind of get them involved in shit. It turned into an issue. And now you have people in the community kind of fighting against each other, arguing and being really kind of crazy because they all kind of feel let down because Yes Jules was the one person that was offering them an opportunity that was never really on the table to be a part of Yeezy's team to see what the inner workings on and whatnot it was quite redacted to be fair that's why I remember a few people flipping you know coming up to me and asking me of certain things when it comes to gay and whatnot and one thing I've always said when it comes to this door stuff is that you should always 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 want to get involved with people like yay based on your talent and based on what you can actually do as opposed to trying to like slime your way in through the back door um i think this is what the yes jules thing has proved like there is no like shortcuts and i think we all know this anyway i'm i know i'm preaching this as a cry choir but there is no shortcuts if you want something out of life if you want to be a successful person if you want to kind of work with some of your heroes and your peers you just have to work hard at the thing that you want to work hard at you have to have a talent you have to showcase like be able to showcase something to them a finished product of some sort but the whole idea of just like putting stuff on the usb or mailing it all this sort of nonsense no one's gonna have the time to stop and watch that sort of shit most people won't so you're better off just like you know hey I'm going to look, it's what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to flip in, do this work as best as I can. I'm going to promote it. I'm going to tag in and go from there, especially when it comes to Ye, because there's been screenshots being put out there at the moment of him essentially being in contact with a lot of fan pages out there, one particular being Gay Fanatic. So if Ye already contacts and speaks to on DM with random fans here and there, then there's no kind of like suggestion that it can't happen to you. But focus on your work first and then kind of try and get in front of him that way based on the merit of your fucking work and your talent and shit as opposed to trying to like, you know, backdoor your way in through connections and shit. It's just not going to work because, you know, if anything, yeah, he is probably quite finely attuned to that kind of bullshit meter person that doesn't really want to do anything. I'd imagine. But hey, maybe I could be wrong. Maybe I could be blood clot wrong. I can't imagine having to having to flip in oh seven point seven mil though. Can you imagine that? Like, I thought sometimes, I think, I remember my largest debt I ever had was maybe like five grand, right, for some unpaid bills that I forgot to fucking pay off. And I thought at the time that might as well just be like a million. I might as well end my life today. Do you know what I mean? I can't imagine what it must feel like waking up knowing that you have to pay back 7.7 .7 mil. Maybe that's the first figure put out and maybe by the time they go to court, it won't be 7.7. .7, but either way, that's a lot of money to for, for a flipping um, fire. You know what I mean? That is a real, 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 real lot of money. But hey, um, what blessings to her. Hope she works it out. Hope she's able to work it out.